These are the speaker tapes of Fifth Dimension Young People's Group Alcoholics Anonymous, a virtual group meeting every night at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Enjoy. My name's Mayhem. I'm an alcoholic. Um, you know, uh, I was just really thinking about what I was going to share tonight, and I know there are a lot of people that are you know, counting days early in recovery. So I really just wanted to, you know, reflect back on, you know, like my last sobriety date. And, you know, it was uh, March 15th of 2020. And, you know, it's given me an opportunity just to kind of reflect on my behavior and that kind of like some of the things that I was doing that most probably led me to go out. Because, you know, before this point, you know, I'd, started going to Alcoholics Anonymous in like 2012 and I was sober. I was able to get four years about being sober. And then I, I was out. This is part of my, like, I guess like two year run. This is the end of the run. And, um, you know, like I was still going to meetings and doing stuff, but I wasn't sober at all. Wasn't in recovery. And I, I think, you know, one of the biggest things, you know, that, uh, was that I, I I think I think I thought I I got this I can do this I got this and and that was that that was the you know maybe the biggest thing and now I'm just like I don't know what's going on half the time you know like that you know I'm just more like uh, willing to ask for help and not think I I know everything and that yeah I need to ask God or you know my sponsor or other people in the program what to do um, because you know like. Uh, like, although I've been sober for a couple years now, like, as one of my sponsors said, life gets lifey. It still really does. And I need, you know, other, other men, other, other people, other people in the program that have more time to really show me like how to, to deal with things. So, you know, um, when I had, had that, you know, back in 2020, I, I thought I was doing everything. I thought I was doing everything correctly. If you asked me if I was working my program, I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm doing it. You know, I'm going to meetings, doing stuff, you know. Um, but like, you know, I wasn't really part of a like a home group. Like this one, it's so important to have a home group and to be really active in it. That's another thing. And also to be really connected with other other people in the group, you know, and have a core group of, you know, like I I uh I need to have, I have a core group of men that I call pretty frequently and that, and that's really important um, because I just can't do this alone. And, you know, um, a lot of them like know me pretty well, so they can, you know, just call me out on stuff when I need, when I need to, you know, and that, that's a big thing because like, I can just get caught up in my head and think I know everything. And, uh, you know, like <clears throat> this online stuff, very good. And, you know, tomorrow I'll be going to in-person meeting. I, I think people have mentioned that before, like, uh, those are important too. I need to be around other alcoholics, you know? Um, and that was one of the things, you know, like, you know, before the pandemic hit, like I, I was, so I kind of got sober, like right at the beginning of pandemic. And so I, I was going to like a, maybe like one in-person meeting and I wasn't like, uh, you know, it was, uh, so, you know, um, like the traditions are very important. And I think, you know, going to a meeting where it isn't just like a pump people pump with people just like hanging out and talking about you know stuff you know like focusing on like recovery and, and and the solution you know and the solution is like the steps you know and like some kind of higher power god you know and so um you know i think for me like due to the pandemic i was exposed to a lot more meetings i met a lot more people and really got very much more involved with the big book and that's so important <clears throat> You know, because that's where, for me, uh, the answer is for my for my problem. Because for me, it's just you know, like uh, I like I like to drink, I like to do drugs, but that's you know, that's kind of the tip of the iceberg. I just you know have a real malady, right? And the only way for me to, you know, like well, this is all stuff I've learned in the meetings, right? Like I need, uh, I need. I need some kind of power that's other, that's greater than me. And that's the point of the big book. It's connecting me with this power greater than myself to overcome this problem because I'm powerless over it. And I, I've seen it so many times, right? 
And so by like, you know, working the steps, working with other, other men and working the program, I can connect with this power that's going to help me get through all my problems. And for me, it's just like, it's a, some days are better than others kind of process, you know, but when I am working it, I, I do see my life change a lot. And I do see that, you know, uh, the problem has never been any of an else. It's just been me and my, my perspective and how, how I, how I look at other people and how, you know, how I, you know, I'm, I'm not handing things over to like a higher power, you know, cause for me, I just want to control everybody else and everything, you know, that's kind of the point, you know, like, why aren't you doing what I'm telling you to do, you know? And, uh, anyways, uh, so, um, I think another one of the another one of the things that I was, I was just kind of rumbling today, but like one of the things that I learned when I came back in this time is that it's called Alcoholics Anonymous, and that meaning anonymous meaning like uh, what, what did the person say is like anonymous in terms of my spirituality or like whatever I identify with. Like I don't need to come in here being like ah uh, whatever you know like this is what I do. Da, da, da. And like, I don't need to like, tell you that or tell you that, you know, you know, it's just kind of like, I can be anonymous about that. And that, you know, that I think that for me, like, that was one of the most things that was like really difficult. And when I first came to Alcoholics Anonymous, because, you know, I practice Buddhism, I'm not Christian, you know, and so uh, I really felt, you know, like, a lot of pressure, you know, I, was, I grew up in the North, I, I got first so, I'd sober in the Northeast, so I was like, well, I got to like, you know, be Christian or like, you know, I have to say the Lord's prayer. And, you know, like <clears throat> I've also done some research on the Lord's prayer, which is, it's kind of interesting. It's not anyways, but the, the point is that like, I just thought I had to be Christian to like get sober, but that's not true. That's not the point of Alcoholics Anonymous. You can kind of be whatever you want. You just got to believe in some power greater than yourself. So if you're having that trouble with that word God or whatever, just remember, you know, just keep coming. You, you'll find something because there is something I don't, know, I don't know what it is half the time. I just know that I'm talking to something and that it's keeping me sober. And I think that that was the biggest thing because, you know, I felt like, I felt so, uh, you know, like, I don't know, I, I guess awkward, you know, because I really do like my Buddhist practice and it's really helped me a lot. And I didn't want to change that. You know, I didn't want to have to change to to like be like a believe in Jesus or whatever or or something like that. And I think that was one of the, the major things is it helped me like really get back into my faith and to see like, like the real power of it. Cause that's the point of the big book, right? It takes us out of ourselves so we can connect with whatever spiritual thing that is like God, nature, whatever. It helps us put our hand into that. And that's like the point of a sponsor, right? That's what all my sponsor told me. Like the point of me is putting your, my, your hand. I'm going to put, what is it like putting, um, my job is to prevent your hand into your higher power's hand. Like, that's the point. Like, whatever it is, you know, because, like, if we can be guided, if I can be guided by that, right, I make better decisions. And now it's, you know, it's not like it's perfect. It's a, it's a lot. It's a, it's, a, it's a little, like, you know, I, I do have to get up and pray every day, but I'm not, like, I think before I would just so obsessed with other people talking about me all the time. All the time. And, you know, like, that it was even happening, like, you know, before I'd gone out, like I was so worried about what other people thought about me, but like I have no control over anybody other than myself. And why am I worrying about them? I remember like, like I had this uh, conversation with one of my friends from school and, you know, like she's like a normal, like she's like normal people. And they're like, you know, we don't worry about so much about what other people are doing and thinking. We just kind of focus on ourselves, you know, like we don't care. And, you know, like, I think being an alcoholic, I just get so focused on like, why are they thinking about me? Why are they doing like it's all about me, you know? And like that, that that was, you know. I think that that's that's the best thing about having for me higher power. It's like okay, let me just like focus on this task right now. All right, God, like I'm worried about you know what uh, David's doing or what whoever's doing, like what they think about me. Like no, let me just like I'm gonna do my best right here. And that like, you're going to take care of that because I cannot try to control and manipulate all these other people because I don't, I can't. And in the end, people will do whatever they want. And it's just, you know, um, 
I think more recently, that's been one of the bigger things that's been really helping me. And I've learned all these things through like talking, you know, spending time on the phone with other other men that have more time and really them sharing with me like what they've been through and how they dealt with it. And I think that's that's the real power of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's that, you know, it's not, you know, there's so many people around around me that I can just ask for help and they'll just kind of tell me like how they gotten gone through it. And um like for example, recently I have a, I have a new sponsor now. And you know, we were just talking about stuff and that, you know, I I, you know, I'm in a professional program, so I need to be a little more careful about my uh what is it? Like my status as an alcoholic. Because you know, he this my sponsor now, he's like an accountant. And so he he was saying that, you know, like in the professional world, that's like a like a liability being an alcoholic. You know, I never thought about that. I'm like, oh, whatever, man. I don't give a shit what you think about me. You know, but it's like, you know, like if you're in like a professional program, right? Like it could be a risk, you know, and that's something I never thought about. I'm talking about him. I was like, okay, I just need to be more careful about who I tell about my stuff, you know, because, you know, I just assume everybody, not everybody is my friend. And I think I just assume like, you know, like the world's like an AA meeting, but it's not. Everyone's really nice in AA. I think so. Like, they're not going to judge you. They're going to help you. They want the best for you. But the world isn't like that. It's not. It's a very different place. It can be a really rough place. And that, you know, people can, you know, like take advantage of you and, like, judge you, especially if you have an alcohol, if you're an alcoholic addict. And so, like, I think I just took that for granted, you know, um, but it's important that, you know, I'm just careful. And that's another thing, too, about being alcoholic synonymous, right? It goes back to that. It's that I don't need to, like, tell everyone that or say that I can just do my thing and just be like, you know what? I don't want to drink today. Or like, that's not what I'm doing today. Or like, you know, I'm not drinking because I'm Buddhist, you know, or whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I think, you know, it's, um, and another thing that, you know, I kind of kind of talk about this before, but I know that it's, I'm just, you know, much less of a people pleaser in that, I like myself is my priority and my priority comes first, no matter what, you know, because that's, that's what's important. And, you know, for myself, I just, you know, I don't spend a lot of, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have any friends that smoke pot too much or that, that drink really unhealthily, you know, and that it's just, I don't want to be around that. It's not good for me. And, you know, like, I don't, you know, I surround myself with a lot of sober people. And people that I know that will, that respect me in my recovery, if they don't, I just don't socialize with them. Like, what's the point? Like, it's, there's no point. I'd rather just be by myself or, you know, like, yeah, that, honestly, I'd rather, like, if you're going to be like, like, a, like a, a risk to my recovery, I'd rather not be around you, buddy. Like, what's, I'd rather you do your crazy, ridiculous thing and me be by myself watching Star Trek, I love Star Trek and not dealing with your stupid shit sorry you know because that's a lot better than me hanging out with you and then like a couple of hours later being like man i want to smoke some pot you know because you're annoying the hell out of me and that's what happened when i went out you know, on that two year two year trip so but um anyways yeah so um you know, when I, when I, when I had that last relapse, I, I was really brought to my knees. Like when I had that, like last in like, like back in like 2020, March 15th, like I literally was brought to my knees and I, I was so, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was so sad. And I was just, you know, like, so like, you know, like I, I, I had given up everything, I guess. You know, and I was just willing to do whatever you told me. And I, I think that for me was so important because, you know, if I, you know, I, I needed to really change my life and how I dealt with things. And I, you know, for me, I guess thought it was all oh, like, I don't need to, okay, I'm not drinking today. Maybe I'll go to a meeting, you know, and, you know, but the reality is for, for, me, for me is that like, I need to really take everything one day at a time. So that means like every day I got to go to a meeting. Every day I got to talk with another alcoholic. Every day I got to do something that's going to take care of myself 
you know, in every day, like I got to make sure that I'm not, you know, like, yeah, I got to, you know, and help other guys. I just, you know, I think for me, I, I just, I know the biggest thing was that I replaced my uh, alcoholism with workaholism and it just kind of brought me back to the using, you know, I, I'm smoking pot. So, um, but yeah, I think, now keep it in the day is so important. And uh, I just really want to thank David for letting me share and look forward to hearing from everyone else that shares tonight. And uh, thank you very much for letting me be a service tonight. Thank you.